humbling. And uh, I mean, last year's winner was Amber McKenzie, who uh, you know I, I short of I thought she was going to take off a superwoman top, but you know she's <laughs> 15 years old, incredibly articulate. She was late for the prize giving, so I think she was winning the national swimming championships. Wow. You know, so um, it's encouraged incredible all rounders, and uh, some of the ideas that they've brought to the fore is just it's mind boggling. I think you know Amber's particular one was um, you know you spoke about the mm -hmm. example of adversity it was uh, around the, the chicken gunya epidemic last year, she created an anti-mosquito repellent and had sent it and I think raised something like four and a half thousand dollars. Organic. Yeah, organic, because she subsequently, you know, was obviously donated all of it back to the local school, near her own school, and uh, we awarded her with some prize money and some gifts. She subsequently awarded all of that as well, so, it, you know, for a 15-year-old, it's humbling to see that level of... Um, commitment to her community and society and the entrepreneurship and she wasn't alone there was a whole bunch of them and we're very lucky here in flow as well and that we had a, a whole a lot of them in here working as um on internships so we've won uh, one young lady who was sold uh, they won the the cakes the uh the, the market ready market ready and uh, she was in here for us for a month and she was also selling her cakes inside the cans <laughs> when she was inside here so you know why do we get involved in it? It's incredible to see that level of entrepreneurship. And, you know, personally, as I said, I want to applaud what the guys are doing um, at the BEF. And it's, it's a privilege for us. And, you know, I'm sure Amanda and for his goal should be associated with it. And, um, you know, entrepreneurs need to think differently, as uh, Keith rightly pointed out. And, you know, our major shareholders of Cambridge Wireless, our, our former Columbus guys, all come from this background of entrepreneurship. And at last year's awards, I would have shared Brendan Paddock's story. Um, which was, as uh, Keith pointed out, started out selling worms and fish bait and went on to selling uh, alcohol and cigarettes, which was uh, at, at, at university, but went on to create the company that became Columbus that's now part of Cable and Wireless. So it just shows the seeds, and, it, you know, and it's the same with our other shareholders, and it's something that we're always trying to develop in here, think outside the box, be entrepreneurial, and uh, you know, we're very happy to, uh, to, to continue to support that. As people and just simply great humans <laughs> who gave thought to the charities that they wanted to support, why they wanted to support their charities. I was I was super impressed because like, I wasn't thinking of those things at that level when I was 15 years old. They were really, really impressive children. So once again, this year, we intend to reward the young entrepreneurs who use their businesses as an opportunity to make an impact in the community and show their public spirit in here. Bulldozers, whatever, and scrape it off the beach, or volunteer groups who actually physically take it off the beach. That doesn't solve the problem. That's a stick in plaster. It, it just hides it a little bit. That is not an entrepreneurial approach. So what do the entrepreneurs do? I'm going to pick on one, Paul Doyle at the Crane Hotel, who clearly has a vested interest because it's right on his beach. It's one of the, you know, supposedly top ten beaches in the world. He has a vested interest. What's his reaction as an entrepreneur? He goes, finds a design company in China who can build a boom to try and keep the seaweed away from the beach. Right? He invests his own money, he's taking a risk, in developing the product. He's an innovator because he tells a design company what he would like. He's enterprising because instead of waiting for somebody to do it, he's doing it for himself. The entrepreneur in him then says, hold on a minute. If I solve this problem for myself with this boom, this boom could also be used to solve the problem for every single property in Barbados or the Caribbean or Central America or indeed anywhere else in the world that has a similar problem. So he's registered a patent on the boom to keep out the sargassum and he now has the franchise to sell them throughout the Americas. So he's going from a problem to an incredible way to build up a new business. That is enterprise. That is what we want. So the $20 challenge is mini, mini scale of that, but guess what? They have exactly the same experience as Paul Doyle. It's the same kind of problems. I need to start a business. What am I going to do? Look around for opportunity. They see the opportunity. They decide on the business. They try and launch it. I don't have enough money. Well, how do you get more? Maybe form a partnership. Got three of the other kids to form a group. You got forty dollars, uh, eighty dollars now, not twenty. They they have the same experience as a real life entrepreneur. They have the same emotions, including when they do eventually make money. They're holding their own money in their hand. 
what do I do with this now? Well, they know they have to give us $20 back because it's a loan. <laughs> but we also encourage them to make a donation either to charity or to some body or some institution within their own community because they must understand the concept of giving back.